All right, Bam Bang, today is uh, Monday. It is August 15th. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. It is Snake Draft Monday. We are joined by, uh, I think, third-time guest. We are joined by Rear Admiral of Spit and Chicklets. Rear, great to have you, as always. How are you? Fantastic, boys. Don't mind my Bach and dog in the background. I'm on vacation up at a lake here in Vermont. Uh, I'm having a coffee right now, but I'll be making the switch to beer soon. So. Thanks for having me, as always. Love you, love yeah. you fellas. All you right. said you had to set your alarm for this. How late are we talking you sleeping in? in vacation Um, time in vermont i let's see i definitely up with the sun today last night i'm on a vampire schedule when it is but i stayed up i mean literally the only you could my people looking at my twitter the only three things in this in the sky last night you could see with jupiter venus and mars when it was like getting light out like that's how like open the sky yeah you can you can look at the uh, that at night sky app and it tells you what planets are where they are in the sky and all you could see was Jupiter, Mars, and Venus at like five o'clock. Which, which one? But which popped. one were you yeah, on? Which one really popped? Which oh, one were Jupiter, you on? Jupiter was popping, but Mars is wild because it's like <laughs> it's red. red you can pick. Red. You can pick but Mars out of like a normal sky. You just got to find the big ass red star. Yeah, That's Mars is sun. real. Like it almost looks like an airplane like blinking. Sometimes yeah. it's that red, but yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. It's been good nights for mm-hmm. planet viewing. You got four of them at once the other night: mm. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. They all kind of like lined up. It's pretty. Pretty cool stuff. So Ari is here for our <laughs> long anticipated hockey draft that we've been waiting, we've been saving, waiting for, here, for here, years. Here's the Love thing. You all one, two, three, four, five, show all the bye. Here, here's the thing. Chief's giving us guff because we never do hockey drafts and he's like, Oh nice, you're you're getting busy, you're getting RA, what are we doing? But it's like I don't, you know, I don't. What you gotta, you gotta give me something. What do you want to do? Should, I'll do sweater I mean, someday. We did, we did an all. T- we did an NBA one guy per decade draft. Why don't we just do that? I don't. I, I I I don't think myself, Dave or Carl, no. Just like a Listen, lot of things. Just I, like, if, if you're you, passionate, and I love the fact how passionate you are as hockey, but just as like a steward of the product, I don't know if that. I, I got just an don't, idea. Like it could move the needle if it's if it's Stanley Cup time and we're doing all time sweater. No, no, like that type of stuff. Yeah. But right now. Well, we'll it's have just the, tough to market. This is what we'll I get propose. The bump going. You guys did the oh, wrestling no, see, draft. That's smart. <laughs> oh, that's really smart. You guys did the wrestling draft in. At least me and you were not on it, I believe. Couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. I never watched it. So why don't you guys just do that for like the start of hockey season? I'll like just it. go on chicklets and we'll oh, do a snake draft. The, honestly, the I would, I'll, I would I'll sit out. In the spirit of, I just said I'm a steward of the show. In that fucking spirit, you have the three spit, spit I'm, chicklets I'm very guys. open to that. Me and Dave sit out. and then. Just, I mean, I would have, probably have to sit out. I mean, I no, you I host know. it. You have to host it with the three chicklets guys. Chief. We'll yeah. figure something out. Yeah, it's possible. I'm yeah. open to that. I'm open to that. Okay. Um, but with that said, we are doing TV today because yeah. R.A. is such a good TV guy. Uh, his original pitch, Sunday, May 11th, 1980, 6.55 a.m. What does that mean? That's what your shirt says if you're watching on YouTube. I've got to show you that. You guys know that. What oh, I right. mean, come on. That's got to be one of Ruzioni or like that's got to be the goal. Oh, okay. Oh, is it? In May? No, that was February. I don't know. Fucking good fellas, man. Good oh, fellas. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm I taking a stab. 1980. Time. <laughs> when, oh no, they they were doing it in Lake Placid. That's mm-hmm. my bad. I thought there was it, a that was when they switched to like when the helicopters were chasing them. Yeah, Henry Hill. The last yeah. day Henry Hill went, went uh, and before he got sent to the clink. I, I, said, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Again. Your uh, your first pitch for this draft, RA, was 1970s movies. That's tough. It was. Which. In- <laughs> You, you could go, all right. The other post, I keep cock blocking you. Uh, yeah, you guys were too scared. I guess you didn't think there were enough of them. I sat there in five seconds. I wrote down Rocky, Jaws, Star Wars, Godfather, Godfather Part Two, The Sting, uh, Butch Cassidy, uh, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Deer Hunter, uh, Apocalypse Now. There was 20 movies I grabbed up, boom, 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 boom. And like, you guys couldn't have done a 70s draft. But all right, so we got to do what, TV shows instead? I uh, mean, I was born in the... With two months to go in '88, so I don't even remember the '80s, let alone was yeah, alive during the '70s. Of course, they're classic. Decade of cinema ever. You've seen, you've all seen dozens of movies from the '70s. Yeah, but you've the basis of conversation is our familiarity with the topic. So, I've like, seen, we could do a yeah. 1970s draft, but I mean, I'm gonna sit here. Oh, great pick, Jaws. Yeah, I, I don't give a fuck. But like, I feel. I love Josh. I love Josh. That's not what I mean. That's you guys are. <laughs> I love Josh. But like letters, I, for instance. Was, I think there was meat on that phone. But that's alas, not what I meant. TV, TV. Go ahead, Alex. The other host that I keep talking No, no, you're good. You're good. All right. You, I, I do agree with you. I think there was some meat on that bone. I think similar to hockey, I think one day we bring in fucking large, you, yeah. you know, and, we, and we'll we'll chop that up as well. Um, yeah. Let's but, just outsource our show. <laughs> well, I mean, you but know. But that's just the trouble. Like, it's the same thing. Like, why haven't you guys been superheroes? It's like, well. We are just not the real yeah, most. I think it's just oh, you for superheroes. Yeah, I came across the old fucking series. That's why. <laughs> I would like. 
<laughs> yeah, again, I would like that, but... There's just some shit that's out of our reach. I When we get done with this, right, and, and like, the Harry goes back and he's working on the show and he's getting ready to publish it, like, whether... We know if it's a good show or not, and it's because of how, like, uh, how the debate goes. The banter. Yeah. Yeah. So today's draft will be similar to the uh, NBA draft we did with Coley back in, what was that, a long time ago. Last Maybe year. our first Months draft ago. in this Seven. new office. Yeah. Was, or yeah. was it this? Yeah, I don't know. Regardless, it was a long time ago. Say it was ago. a year ago. Back so when Coley worked here. We are doing sitcoms. Uh, it's going to be 70s. You get one from each decade, 70s and before, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Same thing. We are going to make this a pre-2001, but then there was like, well, we don't watch that too much as well. I so. thought you said it was pre-80s originally. No, no, no. I was 20th century, I said. What is it? It was going to be only 20th century. Okay. Which now I feel like you're thinking and you could have been able to do it. <laughs> it's a good mix, though. It's like it, it's surprisingly hot. There's probably more funny shit the last like decade than the, all the previous ones because there's so many streaming channels now. So. Yeah. Agreed. It's gonna be fun. Fuck you, Chief. I, I, I will I'm, say this: you motherfucker. <laughs> now I'm yeah. now I'm mad going into the draft because this guy didn't listen to me. He thought all I said was pre '80s when I just said no. 1999 and before which we easily could have done which i was do you understand maybe why i was so stunned now do you want to pivot and just do it anyways it's too late for that i got my list made yeah we'll just continue with what we got okay can you Fucking read the chief. decades again? i got a 22 pre uh 2000 you list. scumbag <laughs> you scumbag man those hey, are the you know really what? good ones too hey i apologize those are the best that's what i'm saying yeah 80s was a golden decade for fucking sitcoms. And so was obviously 70s and before. Uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Um, should I read the definition of a sitcom? Definition of a sitcom. Um, a <laughs> Every time we pull out a definition, we... Play. I know. I know. That's why I, I don't... I, this could muffle some things. I that's don't, why we said at TV comedies. I think if you call it TV comedies, that's, then people, yes. people get pedantic. and like, situation comedy, oh, two cameras, whatever. Just say TV comedy. If it's a comedy, then boom, it fucking covers all bases, right? All right. I'm just at the point where I don't want to argue in my life as much anymore, <laughs> so I'm fine with that. Thank you for doing that. Uh, TV comedies will be the uh, draft. And now we are set to argue for the next 90 minutes. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. We could start mm -hmm. the timer mm -hmm. because R.A., uh, um, intern Kevin has a number one through five behind his back. What number does he have? Four. No. Carl. Two. No. One. Yes. I'll go first overall. Wow. Whoa. All right, Dave. Three. No. Two. Yes. Um, I'll go two overall. Uh, one through three. All right. Two. No. One. No. Three. Three? three. Okay. Yeah, I'll go third. That's what I want to do. One or two, RA. Two. No. <laughs> Carl. Good. One. Fine. Four or five. Um, I'll take four. All right. Right down the fucking pipe. We filed right in line. Chief Eddie White Sox, Dave Carl, Rear Admiral. Hey, before we get this draft underway, though, we do want to talk about the Game Time app because you guys know that the Game Time app is an exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They really crack the code on how to score deals on last minute tickets, and you can find MLB tickets for under $15. All in on game time. Yankees tickets as low as 14, Red Sox 14, Mets 13, Braves 14, Cubs 12. You name your team, game time has the hookup on deals for you to get out to the ballpark. And the best part is you get $20 off your first purchase. Download the game time app, go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I uh, know the bear season may not be that friendly to us this year, but, you know, you're all going to want to get out to Soldier Field and tailgate and uh, at least be happy until the ball until the game kicks off. So uh, make sure you're using the game time app when you're uh, looking for bear tickets this year. So, OK, let's uh, let's get underway here. We're uh, banking a little bit of these because of travel and whatnot. So we don't know who won last week. Congratulations to whoever it was, though. And um, yeah, without further ado, we could take off. Is there any more questions, though? No. Good. All right, Chief, you're on the clock, number one overall. 
Okay, so I've already fucked up because now I no Piece longer I only I don't really want the number one overall pick anymore. Now I'll that trade. I think about it, where are you? I'm four. I will accept your trade. All right, that's oh, unprecedented. He, he doesn't get anything. Wow. No, I, I I'm moving back I, the way it works. I'm moving out of that first round to pick up an earlier second round pick, and I, I like that All right. better. First trade. First trade of, in the history of the state like track, boys. Wow, that was quick, too. First, over, first overall for fourth overall and the seventh in exchange. So it's one and ten for the ex, for an exchange for four and six. Okay. Four and seven. There you go. Wow. All right, Carl. Oh, man, are, this makes me so, so happy said, because. Out of his ace. Yeah, after we filed the line, too. Okay, I'm going to hear that. I love when R.A. rips on my accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's collective. It's all. I love it. I feel like when that SNL skit every time all of you guys. <laughs> if this goes how I think it will, I should have the best two picks on the board. I should. Uh, we'll see. Dave, I regret to inform you. I should. You. I regret to inform you guys. All right. I'm going to the 80s. I'm taking Married with Children. Oh. Al Bundy. There's. I want him so bad on my list. There is nobody else I want in a like a comedic sick like what I want the 80s. I'm going to Al Bundy. I'm going to Married with Children because. A, he's like one of the funniest characters of all time. I think it's I think it's the funniest show from the '80s, and there is a personal thing where that was like the one thing where my like the only thing I remember my dad ever laughing at as a kid. <laughs> like it, it just it was great, and we would watch it at dinner time and stuff. And that was like the one piece of really. Mature I like how content. Peggy walks and she like waves her arms like this. I love that show. It's for you. It's a perfect pick, I think, because you don't. <laughs> from what I recall, watch other insanely popular shows. I don't think it's worth the one one pick, but for you, it should have been the one one pick. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I got a look from RA. I, I came in today, was like, I, all I know, I know when I walk out of here, I want married with children on my board. I didn't, it was probably there for me at four, I, but I, I don't really care. Gonna, I, I wasn't gonna. Yeah, I wasn't gonna take it. And it's, I know like the reputation of that show, blind spot for me. I don't think I've ever it, seen more. You would than love it. I'm sure I would. It just you don't. You don't need so to. You could just to pick today. it up and watch it though. What'd you say, Ray? It's so funny to watch today because like they just don't make fucking. <laughs> they don't like that anymore. Like just like the blatant fucking the daughter's a whore. And Al's just a sexist pig and like his wife always wants to bang him. They even make fun of him. Like, yeah. fucking like like they have him. Uh, Al flush the toilet and the crowd goes wild. Like when they make fun of the fucking married with children on the Simpsons. Like let's have sex, Al. He's like go pig. And he don't, yeah, he never wants to. <laughs> And then it was like, and then Little Giants came out. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was a coach. Yeah. <laughs> He's Coach O'Shea. He's Coach O'Shea. Uh, uh, played yeah. and won the Heisman. That that show, like, if you've never watched a show, you could pick up the first episode. It could be season 10 or whatever number random season episode. And you would laugh at it because it doesn't follow, like, chronologically. It's, it's a fucking hilarious TV show. Absolutely cool. hilarious. TV Made a show. great yeah. living being a shoe salesman. Yes, he did. He scored four touchdowns for Paul Kai mm-hmm. in one game. That was the decade, though, because it's like half 80s, half 90s, so you, it, could, it could fall. It's when it starts. Down. Yeah, so sorry, I should have specified that, Rear. It's going to be when it starts. I think that's just a, it's a okay. black and white way, so that will be okay. 80s. Yeah. I should yeah. have said that, but you guys knew that. Yeah, yeah. when it starts, right. Uh-huh. Uh, you said shoe salesman. It just reminds me there's a friend of the family uh, who, uh, like, just from the neighborhood that we grew up with. And he moved out to Vegas. He went to Illinois and then moved out to Vegas afterward. Sharp guy, and was a shoe salesman at the Vegas Nordstrom. And we were like, yeah, whatever. Guy was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, a year, like in his mid twenties, because he's selling like Louis. There's something about like the shoe sales category. You're talking about El Bundy, where mm-hmm. like, I know a guy who literally like specialized, went to Vegas because people spent so much money out there on shoes and shit. And he like fucking killed it, and then he moved back to Chicago, and now he's just like fucking working for his buddy's business. That would be an incredible spinoff or remake, or they could make a movie on that about the sneaker culture right now and Al Bundy and how he fits in, like, and how he just doesn't understand it. Like, I don't know. Oh, that's it, a very good idea. Has wow, anyone Ed, thought about that? I don't you know. just did. That's an amazing. I like, love it. That they should make a movie off of like yeah. where it's like a follow up right just now. Just a quick Al Bundy. N- Netflix ninety minute movie about he became really popular in that other show he was in. Right? We're not tip- yeah, I know. Can tip oh, picks. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say like, like maybe we should like move it along there before we give yep. the answers, potential answers out there. Mm-hmm. Man, he's almost um, eighty years old now. Fuck. 
Okay. Married with children, definitely not what people expected, I'm sure. Like he said, it pro- maybe would have been there for you, but like in a, in a weird way, it is nice to see a show like that, like get, it, it, get some, yeah. uh, yep. because get it's, some recognition. Yeah. It's Let's that go. fucking good of a yeah. show. Let's go. Just such yeah. trash TV, but it's perfect He's TV. such an yeah. idiot. I, I am glad I traded back now, though, and I love trading. My th- <laughs> yeah. I think we got <laughs> a little rush here. Trade, huh? Trades are great. Yeah, yeah, like you did the you Jerry Jones, do you trade it up and you grab the Johnny Football? Like that's what you did, and <laughs> it's fine. Like everyone loved Johnny Football, but you, that's what you did. Whatever, whatever. Um, all right, it's to me. So interesting enough, I am, uh, I I'm not strong in the later 2000s. Mm-hmm. That's like, what I've I'm noticed too. I'm strong in the I'm strong in the 20th century. <laughs> um, I'm, I just haven't caught a lot of these new shows, and it's on me, and it's embarrassing, and I should be a better TV guy. So I got to go early here with one that I have seen and one that's legendary, and it's The Office for the 2000s. Great. And I think it's also worthy, and I'm very happy I got it. That was my strategy. I wanted to be as high as possible to grab The Office. If we don't have decades, Ed, it it still is a number one. It's just an unbelievably legendary cultural show. First round pick for sure. I think that there are three shows that you could argue could go 1-1 one, one, and that's one of them and that's with me only seeing maybe a dozen episodes of it. It's awesome. Rear, are you an office guy? Um, Yeah. The, the, after Michael Scott left, though, I think it was like office with Michael Scott and then the office when, when Michael Scott left. The show just was not the same. I know people stuck by it. I struggled to stick by it after he left uh, but I did go back to the last, the last season which was pretty good but uh, I'm not the biggest like office quote guy after he left after Steve, Steve Carl left but no. yeah I'm an office guy definitely a first round uh, first round pick no doubt about it although this is a pretty deep draft it's still a, a bunch of it decades, is. but no issue taking the office yeah I, I, I don't know you guys ever watch the British version I yep. want to get into it no. uh, yeah. I've not the uh, I will say about the later years I thought they nailed the finale I thought like his the the show like the last was it two or three seasons without Michael yeah, Scott yeah eight nine yeah is were, Robert California it, I, I'm still I, on eight actually I thought it was pretty bad but they in term it's hard to end a show and end it well where people are satisfied I thought they nailed the finale mm-hmm. the, so yeah. credit to it, them at least for that it landed, but it's so tough too man you see TV shows like I mean Better Call Saul they're doing like two more episodes and. They like they these guys like they take more money to do three more years, but like no, the show can't go more than five seasons, man. Once you're done with five, six seasons, that's it. I think creatively, it's just like you're just treading water at a certain yeah, point. Yeah, I'd agree. Totally, totally. But uh, Michael Scott, it just can't be said enough how funny that fucking guy is. Yeah, it's um, another show where I think if you, especially season one, yeah, could not survive today. No, no, they made and so, they all say that too. Yeah. Oh, they all it, say that. It's like off-color jokes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I mean, no, just the sexism to like a sexually harassing Pam with all. And it's like, yeah. it wasn't that long ago. We watched it in whole life. Right. And it's like, you yeah. know, I think I think it's going to swing back because, I mean, I'm old enough to remember the politically correct the first time back in like the 80s and 90s. And then the pendulum eventually goes the other way. But I don't know when it's going to swing the other way for, for those kind of jokes again. But fucking, yeah, that, that type of shit, man, you just would not see that in an NBC like first episode. It wouldn't even like get back to the, past the fucking script page at this stage. At this stage, I don't think. Yeah, but we're going mm-hmm. to laugh at ourselves again soon, boys. Hopefully, I hope so. Wasn't hope it so. John Krasinski's big break? Yep. He was just like a regular, like what? what yeah. Wasn't he Lost just like a regular yeah. Joe or something? I think it was a lot of people. Yeah, and I think he was friends with uh, the main writer who played Ryan. Um, yeah, in the show. Novak. But he uh, wasn't like an actor, or, so, or I don't know. What no, he been I should read more. Yeah, There's more of them. Like okay. Phyllis just worked on the show, and they looked to cast that role, I believe, and they were like, well, she she's looks, perfect. Yeah, perfect. She, yeah. she yeah. looks like right. a film. Yeah. 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 And there's one more person that had that same thing happen. That's I, great. I think Krasinski's yeah. story was that he was trying to make it, and then he, like, called his mom and was like, all right, like, I gave it a shot. Like, it's just not happening for me. And she's like, why don't you give it, like, another six months and, like, encourage him. And then, like, three weeks later, he auditioned for the office and, and got it. So, like, that's like he was on the verge of quitting, Sick. going acting. to fucking yeah. push papers. Right. No awesome. pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, Massachusetts presence on the office. Yeah. Christine Novak, well, of course, Corral, man. He's fucking fantastic actor, too. He turned into. He's, oh, a, he's a he's powerhouse. A, he's he can a do anything. great fucking like dramatic actor. Yeah, he brings me. Ooh, he Fox, moves me emotionally. Dude, he's great, he's man. Good. Yeah, and then he he like started off as like a correspondent on the Daily Show. 
You know, I yeah, didn't even know that. Yeah, he was on the Daily Show with John Stewart, like the you know before the Office. Big hockey guy too. Oh, I, oh, I I didn't know that. I only knew that from uh, from that one episode. Right. Yeah, no, he played. Uh, I think he played goalie in, in high school. Yeah, he's he's a big hockey guy. I wonder if he's wonder if he's a checklist guy. That'd be pretty. Cool. That would be that awesome. would be sweet. Um, so yeah, the office. I'm thrilled to get it. It helps my uh, strategy, and I think it's a worthy number two overall. Definitely. Uh, White Sox, Dave. I'm going with what I think is one of the two or three that could compete with number one spot. I'm going to Seinfeld. Yeah, you got lucky as fuck. I there. got lucky as fuck there, and I think that if what I project the following picks to be, that I could get the second best sitcom of all time Whoa. in the second round. But uh, Seinfeld started it in 89, the premiere episode. But you get into the meat of that show. It is the most relatable show of all time. Funny. You got all the great ancillary characters like the like George's cool. parents and, and Newman. It is a genius television show that just hits on all the little intricacies of life. All the day-to-day -day bullshit that we all go through with relationships and women and dudes and whatever. And it's just, I, there's nothing not to love about Seinfeld. And like, even though all the references are outdated now, the show holds up because mm -hmm. it's like the themes of what they're talking exactly, about. Are still exactly, exactly. Universal. So it's a great show. Yeah. Ob obvious pick. Very, uh, very favorable spot for Dave right there. Carl, obviously not a sign. No, I like it. I, I my big, <clears throat> my big gripe with Seinfeld has nothing to do with the show. It's a phenomenal show to binge when you get it in like the twenty-two minute doses. Mm-hmm. I'm not joking. I don't know if you guys have a show like this, but personally, every fucking time I have tuned into Seinfeld from the guide for the last 15 years, I'm in the middle of a commercial break. It is the most commercial show. I can never, ever catch a clean episode <laughs> That's of Seinfeld. An issue. That I'm is, always in and out of ads. I always, and I also feel like the timing, the, like a lot of shows like have a rhythm for their commercials. There's always like two minutes off. So yes. like you're flipping through and you're like it's yes. 26 like 26 on the hour and it's like well we're in a commercial so then you turn back for the last two minutes at 29 it's like what the fuck like that's it's something about it I think it opens you are with on him on something. stage it opens yeah. up with yeah. him on stage making a joke it's, or it closes like they that they stopped doing that because that was the worst part of the show it's it's but very yeah. it's very close to like how I feel about watching the NFL where it's like you're in commercial kickoff commercial I, f I get that same vibe from from Seinfeld yeah. I'll also say if we did a character draft all-time TV show character draft you can make an argument that all the main characters could be first round draft oh picks. they're all totally. royalty and if you did an ancillary character draft you can make an argument that almost all those ancillary characters would are be first, first round draft picks absolutely rare you're a Seinfeld guy right say that again Ed? you're a Seinfeld guy right you know what I'm not the biggest Seinfeld guy like I like it I'm that surprises me like, I just I watched the first season and it was like these four people suck. Who wants to watch this? That's the whole point. They're all season. assholes. Right, exactly. And then I did go back to it. Uh, I know a lot of them, like you know, the references. I, I can't say like I have like encyclopedic knowledge of the Seinfeld show. However, it's obviously I, I had it on my list here. If you know, it would be my first from well, eighties, nineties, whatever decade you're gonna get started in. Obvious first round pick, probably one I wasn't going to take, though I knew somebody would take it, though. Mm -hmm. Just not the biggest Seinfeld diehard. So, though. Seinfeld in the office, like I have only, like I said, I've only seen a dozen Seinfeld episodes, but it's such a popular. I think I said Seinfeld right there. You did. I, I've only seen like a dozen office episodes, but it's such a popular show amongst Americans and pop culture in general that I get all the references and I know all the characters. You yeah. know, like think of how much, how many pop, pots of sci-fi, pot of the lexicon now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. Exactly, but, exactly, know, right. Like, right. you know, the mat. Like, there's just so many things that even if you didn't even watch the show, you know you, that you know where it comes from, right? That's when you're a fucking monster. And Seinfeld's a monster. I mean, the show, not the person. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to be like the best dude ever. Well, by all accounts. I mean, shout out to him and Larry David that just yeah. fucking made mm -hmm. bank on the show. And yeah, they, just they, they get worship for that in the industry for how smart they were as business guys, right? Or yeah, and, and they keep, like, their deal expired with Hulu. They just fucking, boom, they sell it for fucking millions at the net. Like, they just keep I selling it when it Netflix expires. deal was, like, something like $300 million. Yeah, it was crazy. It was insane. insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're you said he's a big you're he's like is he is he revered as like a great guy though i'm pretty know. sure he's like known Gary as, Steinfeld? yeah like yeah, a I universally good i wouldn't guy. say that it, andrew oh, oh, andrew Scholes. I, I think i was just had a story somewhere on a podcast it might have been on kfc radio or pmt or something where he like 
had a story about Seinfeld where Seinfeld was like a uh, outright dick. Huh. He's supposed yeah. to be like neurotic too. I don't think too. he's known as a particularly good. Like, well, that's nice part of the guy. show. Like yeah. how neurotic he is in the show. Like that's based off of how he actually is in real life. Yeah, I think but I, don't he, know, I could be wrong. I think he, uh, yeah. he's got some controversy too. I believe. I, oh, as does he yeah. please uh, please elaborate oh, yeah. on. Oh, you know, Coleman the high schools back in the day. Back like he'd be getting canceled if he was still trolling for his girlfriends. Like he did I, back in the day. I'm not talking out of line. He can go that's one of those things I knew that I erased from my brain, and now it's back. Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying it, that should affect the pick, but that's yeah. No, it's, no, it shouldn't. I mean, I separate the eye from the otters. But yeah, he was 38, 39 years old, sitting in Central Park, like happening to be there. Oh, the high school girls are getting out by yeah. Alan Dale, Shoshana Lonstein. Mm. Hey, how you doing? And, All yeah. right. Well, it's just when White Sox Dave says he's like a known human. I feel like I just had to say nah, it, so blame White Sox Dave. <laughs> he's yeah, definitely well, not like the, the nice, quiet, I take that. Like, nice guy behind the scenes. There aren't like legendary, like nice. But guys his there. his stand. That's what I'm getting. At. His stand up, like he always strayed away from like the shock, yeah, dick joke humor. Yeah, it's clean humor. So maybe that's what I, it's like yeah. makes me think that he's this even, like nice guy. I mean, even a stand up like his the show, which obviously what we just said Larry David had so much to do with the show. I is way better than his stand up. I thought his stand up like. He was good. There were a lot of comedians who got sitcoms then, but the show was way better than his stand up was. His stand up yeah. was, you know, it was decent, but I, I think I think it was overrated. The show I, was way I saw him at uh the at Rosemont. Like two, three years ago, right? No, it was like probably it was probably like eight years ago. Okay. Because I went with uh a buddy who I've had a falling out with and that was like <laughs> eight years ago. And uh but it, it was like it was good. It was like it was a good time. But it was not like the um, the best stand up. Okay, seen. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen him stand up. Yeah. All right, Chief, you're up. All right, so this is a little bit of a strategy pick because RA is sitting right behind me, and I feel like there are certain categories, certain decades that are deeper than others. But I want to get this one. This is the one I watched mostly, like more than any show in the '90s. Uh, but it's, I'm taking The Simpsons as it's an 80s show technically yeah. by our rules. But for me, it was it's what I grew up on in in the, in the 90s, and I feel like it, it paved the way for so many shows Absolutely. like that. And that's one like since I got the Disney Plus, I've gone back to mm -hmm. like the early seasons, and I'll like do that on like an early Saturday morning, just mm -hmm. watch like five or six as I'm recovering and drinking coffee, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it still mm -hmm. still holds up. And then it's like you know an episode that I've probably seen in my life a dozen times. Now that I'm an adult, I notice like other little yep. jokes that are baked in that went over my head, um, you know, in the 90s. So the Simpsons are great, iconic characters um, and, and, and a wagon like they're a wagon. I think they're still going. They made a movie they're, they're They can do anything. So I'm taking uh, I'm happy to have the Simpsons. and I'm sorry to steal it from our eggs. I feel like I think it could have gone, gone one one. It's a good pick. Yeah, Very good pick. Obviously, chief, I'm fine. I'm actually kind of glad you did because it kind of sets me up. Now I know what I have to do from here on out. And yeah, the Simpsons. It's funny. Me and Ed were talking about what you know when the show started. The first Simpsons episode ever was literally a week before 1990 started. It was like it was Christmas of my senior yep. year, 1989. I'll never forget. And those first like eight, nine seasons of The Simpsons is some of the best writing in TV history. It was Shock, Conan, right? right? Conan was What's on that? it. Conan O'Brien was the Conan main writer for like the first half of its existence. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, the first like maybe ten years or whatever. Yeah, though, that first third. I mean, it's been in the year for thirty years. I basically get a one in three chance of finding a classic Simpsons episode. Now I stopped watching like probably 14, 15, 14 to fifteen. Yeah, that's same. about right. Oh, yeah. five ish. Yeah. But those those first like eight seasons, man. Like you, like Chief said, you go back and watch them. Some of the jokes have aged better than others, but some of them, like again, they, what that show was able to do as a as a cartoon was put these jokes in there, kind of real sly, subtle, where you couldn't put them on a regular show, but because they were a cartoon, people weren't paying attention as much. And again, some jokes they probably wouldn't get away with now. They they got away with no chance. And, and I mean, they eliminated up who. So when they cancel the joke, you can still have it on your DVD. They can't cancel your DVDs of Blu rays. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Simpsons. Uh, it's the fucking Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. There's just not a ton to say about it. I took Simpsons. it first overall on another draft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a great. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's a fucking sim And it's like, like it's weird that that and Seinfeld are considered 80s, but still, there's you can't even think you just shoot with those two. Yep. If you're a big fan. So, uh, good pick. Rear, you're up. All right. Uh, I'm back to back here. All right. Taking this one, I don't care how long it might have been on the board for. If, if anyone was going to take it next, it's a no-brainer. All in the family, Archie Bunker, <laughs> 1970s game-changing television. 
That was it. That's it, man. All my family, no problem taking that. Shouldn't be a shock I'm taking this one, bud. Any, have any of you guys seen it to any extent? I have not. You? I've never seen a single second. You I, named a couple characters. Don't know who they are. Okay, so I do know the. I have. I know I'm sure the I, char- I know the character Archie Bunker. I like. I have heard the name, but I have not seen one single episode. I've seen like clips. Look funny. It's okay. I yeah. I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. It's it was game changing television. I mean, he was a, he was a, a a bigot from Queens, New York. Uh, again, it's, you, this is the show people show. You can't make TV like this anymore. Like. You go go back and watch some of the old clips, and they're making fun of him. I mean, they're, they're, half the people watch Archie Bunker like agree with him, and I think half of them were laughing at him back in the seventies. And he's got like the liberal daughter and the liberal son-in-law who live with him, his dingbat wife. It's just like quintessential TV from the seventies. Again, game changing. Norman Lear wrote it, uh, and that just forever uh, altered the trajectory of TV comedy all in the family. So that's my first pick. And in the two, my it was second. This round, is why you trade back, fellas. <laughs> I'm not trading shit. No, this this is another one. I'm no qualms about taking move. this one right away. Cheers. Best yep. sitcom in the '80s. No, hands down. It's, I mean, fucking cheers. And you guys even see cheers? Please. Yeah. Me, yeah. Oh yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, cheers yeah. bleeds into yeah. us because my dad watched cheers. So in turn, I watched cheers. I, I think that's on Netflix. From Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think I was just at the Cheers bar in Boston a couple months ago. It smelled oh, like oh, rotten fish. In the hall. <laughs> the Fano Hall one or the one in. Uh, the original location. The original, right, uh, right across from Boston Commons. He was then we a, went to see the yeah, rear good old hunting He was bench. about to smack you in the face if you went to the Daniel <laughs> Hall one. I thought it was the original he, one. He's a tourist. You go to tourist spots. But, uh, Boston, yeah, the one near Boston Commons, the Bowen Finch pub. But cheers, man. It's obviously quintessential Boston show. Another show that tremendous writing. I mean, there were a couple, very few off seasons there. They lost the coach. He passed away. They bring in Woody Harrelson off the bench. Woody mm-hmm. Harrelson, nobody knew who he was. He played the dingbat bartender Woody uh, that show hummed along. They lost Shelly Long. They bring in what's her face? Uh, crazy Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca How? I can't think of her real name. Uh, what's her name in real life? Um, look who's talking. The mother and look who's talking. Come on, help me out here. Yeah. We know who you're talking about. Um, <laughs> Kirstie Kirstie Alley. Kirstie Alley. Yeah, yeah, Kirstie Alley. Yeah, Kirstie yeah, Alley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He came up for Shelly Long. Just a show. And again, they stuck the, the ending, the, the landing at the end. I think it was 93, the final episode. Cheers, man. I, I, what, more, what more can I add? Cheers is awesome. And it, and it holds up, too. I, I haven't watched every episode, obviously, mm-hmm. but I watched it within the last couple of years, like the first season a little bit, and it was fucking, it was good. I had the same experience because I, I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but I think it, it is. is. It is, yeah. yeah. And I did the same thing where I, it's one of those shows that I had definitely seen a few episodes here and there, but then I went and watched, and I was sitting there and being like, this is nice. Yeah. Like, this is like, a, like kind of uh like right on that line of like wholesome and and like still like good and funny yeah so i i like i like the cheers pick yeah. uh great theme obviously too oh probably the best yeah i think Did it go where everyone yeah. knows your name yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. i had that song stuck in my head when i got boss back from boston for like three weeks just a little jingle do, 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 do. is that your yeah. favorite bar to go grab a pint rear rear ed What's that? Is that your favorite bar to go grab a pint? Oh no, I never, I've never actually been to Bowen Finch Pub, which is where it was based. No, it I'm was not, so the White Sox were playing the Red Sox out there, and the entire bar was just other Chicago people. So I'm sure it's just the tourist trap and everything. Yeah, that's that's all. Yeah, it is. yeah. I've never set foot in there. Well, I've never set in the fake one either in Faneuil Hall. But that's why the, you know, that's what the tourists are for, man. That's you know tourist traps. All right, shout out to Rear Ed, uh, going 70s and 80s back to back. He just couldn't help himself, and I appreciate that. I respect that. Plenty, plenty of meat left for the for the lady uh, decades. <laughs> All right, Chief, back to you. Okay, so I'm looking at two from the 2000s, and I love them both equally, and I just don't know. I'll go with Curb. I'll go with Curb because I love Seinfeld too, and I wanted that on my list. And I feel like getting Curb, I think Curb at its best is better than Seinfeld. And uh, so it's gotten a little dry, but I think Curb is like a home run show. Larry David like kills it. Uh, maybe the funniest person who ever lived. And that, you know, and that's why he kind of just has like a lifetime deal with HBO. Like whenever you feel like making the show, you can make it because it's going to deliver. And I think Curb, the first like five, six, seven seasons of Curb are elite, elite television. It's the weirdest thing. I've seen every South Park ep- or South Park. That's my next pick, so okay. you can take it off the board. I've seen every Curb episode a thousand times. Fuck. Seinfeld. Seinfeld episode a thousand times. I've only seen like a dozen Curb episodes. I loved every minute of them. I just have never taken the time to binge them appropriately, which is a okay, goddamn right, shame. Right. So, uh, Curb, anyone else? Rear, rear Curb guy? Uh, yeah, I'm a Curb guy. I, I The second 
with the little comeback, but you know, after they took a break for a few years, I don't think those episodes are as stronger as the, as the early ones. But yeah, I mean, Larry David, uh, master of cringe comedy, like you see it, you know, people doing it everywhere now. Nathan Field, the show rehearsal on HBO, that like that kind of, I, I guess you could say, has Larry David in its DNA. But yeah, no, no qualms whatsoever taking care of. Yeah, like I said, the the two thousands, two thousand tens, a lot of competition, man. The streaming, the streaming channels, they uh, they definitely added to the potential of this draft but uh yeah, no, no yeah. Problems with and i feel like that's where ed you can have that as an excuse for your sitcom issues is that there's just too many there's way too many there's a too billion many. of them yeah. and like i i just opted for shows like you know breaking bad and the wire and sopranos yep. over this kind of stuff even though i would like it too i gotta watch it um curb i'm proud of you brada boy you're using your brain and seeing that you know well, I need this on my board because Dave has the other one. So good for you, Chief. Happy for you. Thank you. Uh, I was condescending, but thank you. Yeah, I was just saying, you <laughs> really just took that backhanded compliment but it was, in it's, full stride. But it is like, usually he goes, I'm going to be, I'm going to do something stupid. Yeah, and, and then it, he like, gives the big, he's going to go, he's going to go. Back when I was a kid, we used to go to a lake house. They had a VHS player. There yeah. was like he said, it was the only thing we could watch. It was the best show. It'll still be a good I'll show. I'll do that in the fourth round, probably. That's when I usually do that. <laughs> so I'm... I, at some point, say it, but I'm interested to know what you're between. Uh, when it when it comes okay. up, I'm right. sure it'll get drafted. If it doesn't, I will be I'll be mad at the rest of the panel. Okay, um, White Sox, Dave, you uh, also took South Park in the midst of that. So that's that's my fault. Park. That's the second snake draft in a row I've done that on. The first time it was intentional. This one I just had a I just said it wrong. But it's all right. Then. South Park. Yeah. I know Rear Ed. Are you a South Park fan? Not a, not a huge guy. I watched it early on. I was more of a Simpsons guy. Just yeah, it's, I, it's, again, another it's, one. I don't have any encyclopedic knowledge. Very of, different I, than The Simpsons. South Park is, I would say, the most intelligent TV show ever written. If you watch it start to finish and start to learn the characters, like Cartman is the perfect embodiment of just every yep. piece of shit that has ever walked the planet. Just a narcissistic, egotistical, like. He he's Adolf Hitler packaged with like Osama bin Laden, and he and he's but he's a fourth grade kid, and and they deliver it, and the way they write the shows, there could be a major w world event. I mean, they had an entire episode where he was literally Adolf Hitler. So, but the way they package it now, they they have seventy two hours to write a show. So if a major world event goes down three days later, you have a South Park episode on it, and they perfectly, perfectly, perfectly execute how how they satirize 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 that world event with fourth grade students it is one of the greatest television shows ever trey parker and matt stone are geniuses i implore everybody to go watch the uh the margaritaville episode it explains the 2008 crash the housing market crash better than any textbook or any professor or any economist could and it, it like puts it in layman's terms and you're like, holy shit, I understand what's going on right now. Unbelievably good show. It's unbelievably funny. I think that if if I knew that there were other South Park people on this panel, I would have taken it one one had I had the one one pick because it's that good of a show. I think it's the best sitcom of that all. That is time. a cheat code in these things. White Sox Dave knows that he could just fucking throw us around the ring when it yep. comes to South Park. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah. But it's like I would have considered it for the '90s. It's it's. I mean, right out of the gate, right now, Seinfeld, South Park, and Simpsons Curb is like a that, fucking it, we, great Chief one and I are two going by those two. Yeah, yeah nose to Park's, nose right now. South Park's a great show. Uh, I'm I, my personal favorite, or my earliest memory. I was at uh, it was like Christmas Eve or something. It was the year it come out, and they had an episode about how it was like. How do you know you're getting like a John Elway jersey? He's like, because I went in my parents' closet, and it was like Cartman ruining Christmas for the mm -hmm. other kids. And we were talking about the show, and one of my cousins who believed in Santa like heard us talking about it, and he just like burst out crying, and then that made it like significantly funnier to us. <laughs> um, it's I don't know. There's something about that shit just so mean, but like being so mean is so funny. I don't know. For sure. Love it. Um, you would love the show. You would absolutely love it. I'm sure it's, it's just, yeah. We need, it, to, get it's, you, it's we need to get you in a room with uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I would love to. I would love to. A meeting of the minds. I would that love to. Would, Dude, what be, if they like wrote a white tax Dave character into the show? I would love to. Colorado People have compared me to Cartman I feel like before. they already have. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> have, I get compared to George Costanza and Eric Cartman like all the time because they're both conniving weasels. 
So you're <laughs> what? What? So you're? Do you agree that you're? No, not at all. You don't think you're a, an Adolf Hitler Osama bin Laden mix? No, I don't. I would. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> Um, the people who watch the show will know exactly what I'm talking about because he's Eric Cartman's meant to represent all the worst things in the world. Like that's him. I think you explained it very well, Dave. You could have you could have done like a school paper, a school presentation on that. that I well, honestly, you you well could done. write a college thesis on South Park. That's how deep the show actually is. But at its surface level, it's just you know standard dick jokes basically. But it's a very deep show if you like actually deep watch dick it. jokes. Well, I honestly, the themes of it. It's one of those things where, like, you just love how much people love stuff. I love how much you love South I Park. I love that show. I really do. I love that show. Like, the twinkle in your eye if you talk about South Park is. It's genuine. Like, fuck the White Sox, man. Just watch South <laughs> Park. Be that. happy. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> we should. You should have to do that, right? actually. Like, instead of, like, doing a, a spaces <laughs> after a White Sox loss, you should just, like, yes. live, live, live stream, tweet, live uh, stream of you is, watching South Park. Yeah, dude. And just I'm going to do this from now on. Thank you. The, the, I'll say, I'm going to end on this. The Imagination Land trilogy. It's a three-episode, so it's, like, an hour-long total of TV because it's three 20-minute episodes or whatever. It's very good. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. It's very so good. So that is, I think, the pinnacle of sitcom television. Those three episodes back-to-back-to-back. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's awesome. Um, all right, it's to me. I'm, I'm in a tough spot here. I'm in a tough spot here because it's like the one do you watch the most or the one that you know is like the coolest, that, that you still liked as well. Not that you – Go with your heart. You get the pander. You got a pander. Yeah, I'm going to do the opposite of a pander actually because I'm going to go with the one that I like the most. So I'm going old. I'm going in the 70s. And uh, it fucking what you talking about, Willis? I love different strokes. I fucking love different strokes. I, I really did. I know there's more popular ones, but there was something about Gary Coleman, fucking being just this lovable kid, who was an orphan. And it's <laughs> it's just a, it, it really is an awesome. I could I could watch episodes now. I really could. Didn't they like feed him like anti growth hormone? He had some. Uh, there was definitely some some something. some funny business for yeah. sure. I think I think he just had a you know a genetic anomaly whatever i don't think they oh, I, I, I thought i could have sworn i heard about like a lawsuit or something like stay off wikipedia no, no i mean growing up i know because he was always this little little guy and there's of course the classic picture of him chief with mark messier after the edit yeah, 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 yeah. you got know, like a face cloth on for, for a freaking towel and gary coleman sitting on his lap it's such a weird picture but yeah different strokes had huge show back in the 70s 80s it was in that like facts of life i'm sorry yeah fast yeah, Facts of Life family, different strokes. There was a couple spinoffs there together that was tied in with um, Good Times as well. Janet, because Janet Jackson was a little girl on it. They were kind of all in, like the same model, spinoff family. But yeah, what you talk about, Willis, all time classic uh, American TV phrase. And ironically, Todd Bridges is the only one of the three uh, kids who's still alive these yeah. days. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. It's actually very, very sad and eerie was uh, the daughter. I forget her real name. She yeah, like. Plato. Well, and she went on Stern like the week before she died, right? All right, or yeah, like the she day had before. A real tough got in the drugs and was just yeah, it's, it was sad, man. And both of them, Gary Coleman, like he was like a security guy somewhere, and people like would recognize him and he'd flip out and stuff. And Todd Bridges, you know, the, the other brother, he's had his difficulty. He, that's it's a miracle he's the one that's still alive because he's had a lot of a lot of issues. So yeah, yeah it's good to still see him there, man. These these childhood stuff, man. I can't imagine. Like the pressure, they, oh, they oh, were yeah, back yeah. In the seven, especially when there were like no rules, like as far as like you know what people like kids do back then. I mean, it looked like Drew Barrymore, what she was doing, ten years old, getting yeah. served out all at bodies and shit. It was a crazy era, so I can't imagine what it was like to be a child star back. I then. can't imagine what it's like to be a child star today with all the social media bullshit. That, it just gets too, worse yeah. and worse. Yeah, yeah. It get poison, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I certainly could have grabbed a better one-two punch, but I don't really think it matters as long as your board is more evened out. Um, I'll get better ones later on. Everyone needs a 70, so mm -hmm. if they're not back-to-back, -back, I don't think it matters. I really want a different strokes because I really like the show. Great, great theme, too. Do you, you guys have no love for different no, I, strokes? I can't contribute I can't, to the conversation. I've seen it a decent strokes. amount, but not in so long and not enough to comment. To, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, different strokes is my pick. Uh, back to you, Carl. Um, although smart thinking on your part because that's a top tier show from the 70s and I could be thinking in the 70s yeah. and so that is if you do like it and you do think it's a big show from the 70s it, 
I can understand why you would take it in the second round. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's going to be here in the third, fourth, fifth. I got a lot of respect for that show. Yeah, I thought you would be more in, more in tune with it. because I'm now sorry I, for it. No, but no, now that you're not, I kind of regret taking it. I could have got it next. So. Yeah, I and I took a chance. I want to be talking about the picks. Trust all me. Right. I so. definitely want to be running my mouth. Okay, uh, let's do... Um, it, I have these two shows for sure. I'm so, I know that somebody's going to be very mad about this. Um, where I'm debating is what order to take them in, and I'm trying to figure out if it matters on the graphic because. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it's always sunny for the 2000s in the second round. I'm gonna take it's always sunny, and Dave, you've talked about it recently in this office. There's really not much I have to say about that show. I, I will obviously introduce it as. That like was, that our was, generation's funniest, sh like show, I think. That was my other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was between Curb and Always Sunny. I think Always Sunny is it's fucking great, spectacular. It's yeah, back fucking. -tabular. I thought you weren't a fan for some reason. No, 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 no. I, I am definitely a fan. Okay. Of it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I I'm in the middle of it right now. I, I'm like halfway through the entire series, and there it's just a perfect combination of psychopaths. I would love to scheme with Charlie and. And Dennis in them. That was one of those shows I got in early too. It was like right when it was coming out. Yeah. Um I have a buddy like Charlie too. Everybody knows Mahoney. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little yeah. Oh shit, sorry, my phone was just going off. That's unfair. You're okay. good. Yeah. Um no, yeah, Mahoney's got a little Charlie to him, I would yeah. say. A little bit. A little bit. I like the one there's like one season where Dennis put on all the or uh, where Mac put on all the weight. And then, like, yeah. the next season where he, like, gets super jacked. Yeah. Just, like, ridiculous stuff where, like, you know that the writers aren't, like, you know, hey, guys, why don't we – he's just like, that would just be, just be hilarious if I just put on a ton of weight and, like, just did a season as a super fat guy and then you guys wrote jokes about it. He said he got bored. He's like, shows yeah. go along, like, you get bored about, like, what you can write about and what you can be. So he's like, I decided, like, I'm just going to eat myself into, like, funnier jokes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's yeah. really taking pride in, in your work. But uh, then it was cool when he put the, I, he got, like, shredded and then was just like, yeah. And then the people, who, just, you know, this is, like, my job. Like, I've got trainers. I spend time on this. I, this is, like, all I do. Yep. Um, that character is hilarious. Like, the, the Dennis, Dennis, like, some of, like, my favorite TV scenes of all time are from that show, and like the, that episode where they do the trial or like the spilled milk thing. It's dude, it's a perfect television show. The I don't think I've laughed harder in the last handful of years. It was two scenes. They're they're like talking about how they need to make more money at the bar, and they're like, "What if we let underagers in?" And they're like, two drinks limit," <laughs> and then they're like going and like and no driving. And they're like going over all the things to like make it safer. And then the next scene. Wouldn't you rather the, have them drinking here than somewhere, somewhere else? Yeah, it's a controlled environment. The next scene is this little like nine year old black kid grabbing multiple beers off the bar and walking them to his boys at the table. It was, I was laughing so hard I was getting an ab workout. And then when uh, Matt crashed the car into the wall to fake his death. <laughs> Absolutely laugh out loud funny. <laughs> Just a perfect television show. I'm embarrassed that it took me so long I to get into watch it. it. It is so good, Ed. It yeah. is so good. And you just started what, like last month? Like a month ago, yeah. yeah. I got to do it. Rear, any take on this one? Uh, you know what? Sunny's another one of those shows I, I haven't seen every season of. It, I started watching it back when Netflix was DVD way back in the day. And, and I think when I moved, I ended up like not picking it back up on my DVI got lost some bullshit. Basically I, I started the first four seasons, loved it. And then I just, for some reason, never went back to it. Uh, it's something I do mean to revisit, but another one. Yeah. It probably was on my board, but I'm not depressed. I missed it at all. Mm -hmm. You should be. Yeah. No, see what happens. All right. There we go. Uh, Carl, you're up again. Man, I'm, I'm pumped to take this one. I think this is, Especially our age, there. You know, if you're in your early mid thirties, this was like that '70s show was just an absolute hilarious, hilarious experience in junior high and early high school. Red Foreman is like the funniest character of all time. I am not getting the reaction uh, he's I great. thought I'd get from he's this great. room, but uh, just a, like the all, just an all star cast. Love the con like it was just a hilarious fucking show. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. Red I'm not, I'm not, not reacting because I think it's bad. I just haven't seen it. So, it was great. I loved it. I watched every week. The uh, to the testimonials in the basement, they'd be stoned, and then they'd yeah. cut to Fez. Fez is just like one of the funniest characters. I think he turned out to be a dick, and he was banging Lindsay Lohan. But yeah, he well, was married Wilmer to her. Valderrama. Yeah, Wilmer Valderrama. Yeah, everything but the kitchen sink. That that one fucking. 
Yeah, yeah, that guy's like a piece yeah, of he, shit, right? Whatever you went back he's the not the biggest piece of shit on that. I'm, yeah, yeah, that yeah guy, the, he's not the biggest. The curly hair dude, yeah. what's his name? Oh, fuck, that's right. Yeah, fuck, he had like Danny, yeah. Ma- Danny uh, Masterson. Uh, yeah, Danny Masterson. Yeah. You, you, you voted for a rapist, he's done, you're out. You can't. <laughs> okay, yeah, he was no, like I'll take Law and Order SVU <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I, I reference it again, but Wilmer Valderrama is like a legendary Stern interview too, where he just like opens out and just like talks about all the girls he banged back. In the oh day. yeah, Jesus. legendary coxman, legendary coxman. Yes, and uh, they're making a that '90s show. That's oh yeah, they made it that '80s show and it was fucking brutal. Yeah, but it didn't like, last like at all. Was Ashton and uh, Mila involved no, in that? No. They're involved in this okay. one. Okay, okay. You know yeah. Ashton and Kutcher has like an IQ of like 140. He's like a legitimate genius. No. Yeah. <laughs> There yeah, I heard he wrote all the pranks for Punked. Oh yeah, that was all him. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, he is supposed to be like a super. He's like a, he's a guy from Iowa who was just like so utterly talented that they like, were like, yeah, you're just gonna be a superstar. You one one here, forty too. is like an insane IQ. I yeah. don't. I thought like one seventy was. How much is in this room right now? I think we got two hundred. Harry, oh, Harry's like oh, don't do that. Um, all right, that seventy show. Action Kutcher has a one sixty. So, yeah, that's so maybe I'm looking crazy, at this. Yeah. I, so maybe I misspoke. Maybe Wilmer isn't a bad guy. Maybe he just bang checks. I thought he was. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, he's just bang checks. Uh, so that's '90s, correct? Yes, I like um, '98. All right, it's back to me. You know, I will admit to another reason why I took different strokes in the second round is because I'm being such a pussy. I don't know what I want from the '80s and the '90s because there's so many good things left, and I was hoping Carl would eliminate some for me, and he did not. Oh. Um, so I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the '90s. I think. Fuck, I'm freezing up. I don't know what to pick. One, Ed. Yeah, put the shot clock on. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. I I mean, I think you guys already kind of got it wrapped up. I'm just gonna go with my favorite, and that was Boy Meets World. Good one. I love Boy Meets World. It's got a great fucking theme. Corey Matthews. Uh, it's got uh, Eric Matthews. It's got. It's got. I, I really like Boy Mr. Feeney, Minkus. Yep. They, <laughs> Nobody it, likes Mr. Feeney. Well, you no, know, I, I got to give him a shout out. Yeah, the, the the cool guy teacher with the motorcycle. Yes, Mr. that Turner. guy. Yes, yeah. yes. And then didn't he adopt Sean? I think he did. Sean Hunter. Yep. Yes. Um. I know there's fucking bigger ones. There's way more heavy hitters. Dude, his older brother was such a fucking doofus. Eric, he's such a squid. Maybe I thought they tried. I thought he was like the cool guy in the show. Was he? And I think he's always hanging out with the younger kids. Like, hey, dude, like, what's up, guys? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I love Boy Meets World. It's, it's a great, very show. good show. Yeah. And it was like the perfect show for us at that age. It was like mm-hmm. a show, like perfectly like middle school, early high school. That like every, it was so relatable. Yeah, uh, yeah. It would I mean, have been disingenuous for me to take the other ones on my board. So I'm going Boy Meets World. Rear Admiral, you shook your head in disappointment. I couldn't tell you one thing about Boy Meets World. Obviously, this is a generational thing. I don't know who's in it. Don't know the premise of the show. Don't know anything about it. So I can't properly shit on it. But I definitely didn't have it on my board, and I don't know if it was worthy of a third round pick. But that's what we have the draft for. We pick when we want, where we want. So you're right about that. Uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. I'm going to go with 2000s. I'm going with Entourage. Uh, I think pe- I honestly think people in HQ think Entourage is a documentary, not a fucking a real film. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> they talk about it like it actually happened. Like they, It's like the knowledge of Entourage, it's almost scary at, the, at main HQ. I have very good – I've watched it start to finish many times. Uh, like, I mean, I was right in the – we, I should say, were right in the wheelhouse. So when it came out, we were like high school age, through college, and then early mid-20s when it ended. And uh, I loved it. I mean, I loved every second of it. I know it's like a, it's kind of gotten the Nickelback treatment to an extent where it's like popular to hate on it to a little bit. But there's not a normal dude who's like 30 years old right now, give or take, that doesn't love that show and didn't love it when it was out. All the characters, all the shenanigans they got in, all the hot chicks Vince was banging, all the side pussy that Drama and, and Turtle were getting, it was, it was great. We lived vicariously through that cast. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, that's I, the ultimate living vicariously show. Sorry, Chief. Yeah, I would say the only like I think the reason people hate on it so much is that like it. it I don't know if it's aged well. And then the end of the show. Got yeah, the, the end bad. of the it was 
they had to clean it up, obviously, because of how the culture was yeah, changing. Yeah, the culture yeah. was changing. So he had to like apologize to all the women he womenized and mm-hmm. And it also <laughs> kind of became like let's just Let's throw every star in there for a cameo. Yeah, yeah you know? that, it got to, the Simpsons did that too. Actually, the Simpsons had a, a run where they it's just did it like way better, nothing, though. nothing all the women but cameos. <laughs> all the women. <laughs> That'd be the funniest thing you ever said, Dave. But, but yeah, I, I liked the first few seasons, man. But I just thought it was so like over the top. Like the last few, I mean, yeah. I stuck it out, but it was like kind of rolling my eyes for the last few seasons. But yeah, yeah it, it, it's a, a good show. But I don't. know. I, I thought the end was just like way, way over the top. The last few seasons. Entourage. That's that's fair, fair criticism because it was. But third round pick, still it's a good third, It's a very yeah. good third round pick. I, I, I like the show. I think it's funny, but in the same sense, I agree that there is a sense of like that cult worship was was off putting. It like made the show less funny because you knew how many like douchebags yeah. were out there. It's like I, the fans heard it more yeah. than yeah, what, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Almost like it? UFC in the early stages where you'd be like, I don't know if I want to get into yes. that. All those guys in Ed Hardy shirts and driving monster energy. Yeah. No, great Chief, I know, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I like Entourage, like but it just yeah, yeah. It just kind of yeah. And then, like everyone's saying, it did the quality did dip at the end. It just became like, all right, what scene can we throw? Let's get Brian Urlacher yes. and Tom Brady in. Yep. and have Wahlberg walk past these guys when they're getting on a jet. You know, it's, yeah. it's just Kanye West, Kanye, but great concept, though. It Boys had its day. Man. Great, con- yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to be in the crew. Everyone's yeah. like, who's this guy in that crew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was cool. And like, I think I took Ari Gold in the HBO character draft, and he is like an all time, yep. all time character. Also so. canceled, hundred percent. Um, Chief, you're canceled by. All right, I'm going to go 90s. Um, again, going to the strategy because RA has uh, 70s and 80s locked up, so I can get that coming back around the other way. I'm going Fresh Prince. So Fresh Prince, uh, maybe a little similar to you, Ed, with the Boy Meets World. I feel like those are kind of like cousins in a way, uh, but like kind of coming of age show. Will Smith, obviously superstar, kind of a psychopath douchebag now, uh, but that was his jumping off point. Carlton with the dance was great. Um, had a little crush on Ashley Banks back in the day. It, it was just like a to me like that was like a great a great show. It was just a great show, very '90s and and like perfect. I thought it was like the perfect '90s sitcom. Mm-hmm. I I was looking long and hard at that, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna go with the one I watch more. But Fresh Prince is fucking. What can you say? Pig I mean, slaps, man. Yeah, it's Fresh Prince. Yep. And another great intro song too, like one that people can probably still get a lot of the words right, even though they, even if they haven't heard it in years and years. I'm looking at the board, and I just want to point this out. Sorry to take the shine away from Fresh Prince for a second here. Rear Admiral is the only one who doesn't have his 90s, and there's a fucking bopper on this list that if he doesn't take it, we're going to get killed for. But I don't think any of us care. Hmm. <laughs> I I know. I, I, I yeah. think I know what you're talking about. Oh yeah. I am not take. I was not going to take. No, it. me neither. Yeah. Um, but regardless, any other fresh prints. Oh wait, Prince are you takes. talking about like the most popular show of all time? Yeah. Oh fuck that show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we're all sitting <laughs> here going, fuck I, yeah. that show. I watch that show and I'm like, I can't believe I used to go out with you when I see that show. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't, don't, one of yours will have it. I'm not. I I, I have a reputation to uphold. I'm not taking it. I know what we're talking about. <laughs> Well, I don't. If you're not gonna take it, then no one's gonna take it. That's so, fine. Any other Fresh Prince takes? Obviously, the theme. Uh, Uncle Phil, great father figure. Yep. That's it. I yeah, love the me- show. Opening, I mean, yeah. opening intro. Yep. And then the, uh, you know, it's still like that one. I feel like it's one of the like probably the top. I'll say 25, 50 memes on the internet is Will Smith standing in, in the empty uh, room. Yeah. Like we saw that like Patrick Kane looking around the Blackhawks locker room after they trade everybody. <laughs> and like, yeah. it's just, you know, like I feel like that meme still hits. So I feel like that matters. Like if a show or a movie has like memes that are like, they help keep that show relevant. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd also say for the in- opening intro song, at least probably maybe our generation, like a top five most uh, memorized rap song. Like if you were just a pull a random guy, I'd be like, can you sing? Can you sing these lyrics? Anytime that would come on at the bar, the place would go absolutely nuts. People mm-hmm. in unison, it's like a uh, an anthem of sorts. They're yep. bringing back uh, Fresh Prince. Yeah, but it's not really. Uh, if you watch the trailer, it's not. It's not Fresh Prince. It's called Bel Air. It looks cool. It's got like a different kind of theme than the original Fresh Prince, but it looks good. It's not very reminiscent. But Will Smith is involved somehow. Um, all right, Fresh Prince off the board. Rear Ed, you're up. All right, um, this is tough. This is tough, but all right, my two thousands pick. I don't believe it's been taken yet. Uh, Arrested Development. 
Mm. Um, right? No one, no one took it yet. No. no. I mean, it, I'm talking about more the first per the Netflix version. I'm not even talking about that. I, I know that came back late, but Arrest of Development, uh, just the outrageous show, hilarious, unique, crazy, well written. Um, yeah, I think probably one of the most popular of these of this century, no doubt about it. Uh, and let's see, in the next poll, I'm gonna go for my 2010s pick. This is another one. There's a lot of good shit to pick from, but. I don't think you can get much funnier than Veep. So Veep's great. I think okay. real quick on Arrested Development, I haven't really seen that. It seems like the panel, anybody. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I, I feel like it that's it. I, I know it's like wildly popular, but it feels like a, like it has a cult following. It's like an if if you know you know sort of thing, and it feels like none of us know. I don't know. No, yeah, but like like I'm shocked. It's one of those shows I've never seen a second of it, but I still know the Bluths, and I know about yeah. the Banana Stand, and I know about. Uh, the guy who's blue. Um, yep. you know what I mean, I yep. just I know like so many things about it without ever seeing a second of it, and I know it's fucking. I, Kevin is probably like the biggest preacher, so I'm sure you've had many talks with him about it, possibly. Yeah, I'm surprised. I could, considering you guys like the shit out of um, so, it's sunny and sunny and arrested. There's sort of a lot of crossover there, but I'm I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I'm sure the, the audience probably has a. A lot of arrested fans out there, but yeah, Definitely. No, I get no no qualms with that pick. Yeah, it's that, not a bad pick at all. That's one of those picks that like there will be an army of people being like, "This is the best steal ever." You got arrest development in the third round. Like that's, I feel like that will be the reaction. We'll all just be like, well, "Palms yeah. up!" Like I don't know what to say. Are you upset yeah. he got veep though? It was it was on my list yeah. for sure. Uh, I didn't think he'd take it. I kind of thought I could get that in the fifth round. Um, and I'll go to uh, for my pick now. I feel like I'm gonna I'll take the '70s uh, because for me that's the lightest one. But this is uh, a Nick at Night pick, an iconic show. I'm taking Happy Days. So you got the Fonz, you got uh, Ron Howard who you know launched his career. I think they had a few spinoffs. And uh, yeah. but yeah, like that, like the Fonz is. I don't know if like if my if my brother would be aware of it, but I feel like everyone our age, even if you, you know the fonts, yeah. yeah, you know the fonts. Hey, fonts. yeah, yeah, exactly. With yeah, the, the fucking he, sweet leather, leather yeah, jacket. and you would just yeah. walk in and yeah. hit the hit the jukebox, yeah. and the thing would turn on and yeah. start playing. Like the party He's starts. Like, cool the, guy. Yeah, he was like super cool. It's crazy that he turned into like the nerd coach in uh, the Water Boy. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I thought I think that show is like. I just remember being at like my Nana's house when I and like being watching Nick at night on you know basic cable until like midnight, and it was that was one of the shows, and so that was my favorite of the, of those, and I'm happy to have Happy Days in in the fourth round. Well, Chief, I'm pleasantly surprised that he had take something from back in my era. Uh, at the funds rally, I mean, you just said it, man. There was I was nobody. obligated to, for yeah, the record. You, but. you made us. <laughs> there, was, there was nobody cooler than Fonz back then. But what's funny is, like, Henry Winkler, like, his career, like, you know him as the Fonz for 50 years. And now, it, I don't know if you watch Barry. He plays Gene Cousineau on Barry, the acting coach. And he, he's doing, like, the best work of his career right now, like, 75 years old. I, I've and heard was, that show is great. I haven't seen it yet. Though. Barry is tremendous probably the one of the best show like currently like it was on mm -hmm. hiatus now but like currently airing right now it's unreal um and it was one of those things where it, even if you were born in art it was stuffed down your throat because i feel like people are always for ha fonds for halloween yeah. and shit like that so. and i think like it was very relevant for our parents yeah so like that was like exactly. their show so so it's always just the next generation yep um, all right, happy days. Knew that was going to get drafted, so uh, that's gone. White Sox, Dave, you're up. On that same prism, like I, I remember happy days. I remember Fonz. I remember them being in the diner and hitting the jukebox and all that. I don't remember specific episodes because it's been 25 years since I watched it. One last thing about that. That's where the expression jump the shark came from because, like, the show got bad at the end, and the Fonz, like, I, I, I've seen the episode where the Fonz had some sort of thing going and he, had to, he was water skiing over, had to go off a jump and jump over a shark tank. And, I, and that was where the expression jump the shark well, came from. That's with John Hine, right? That's a nice little Red. fun fact there, Chief. Yeah, yeah, it was actually the ocean. It wasn't a tank. Yeah, it was this big, I mean, it was so cheesy the way to put it together. It was like old, old like shark footage. And he went up on the water skiing. Yeah, that was, that was when they said, like, that's when Happy Days jumped the shark. That's kind of a good point. Good, good call that, bringing that up, Chief. Thank yeah, you. Jump the shark. That was a guy who... Uh, Never mind. No one knows. I only, I only know. Nine, yeah, I'm a the stern, the stern guy, Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, <clears throat> Dave, continue. Um, like I said, don't remember specific episodes of Happy Days. I don't remember specific episodes of the Brady Bunch either. 
Um, but everybody knows the Brady Bunch, the intro with all the boxes in the family. They're all looking at each other. The the uh, the maid or whatever. Alice. Alice. Mm-hmm. Um, Jan. I remember the movie better because I remember Ben Stiller's wife was a complete and total smoke Rocket show. Rocket in, in that. Rocket yeah. in yeah. it. Um, she still is. She was speaking yeah. of Seinfeld. She was the loser in Seinfeld yeah. that they all ripped on. Right. She's like Jerry. She's a loser, and she, she's <laughs> like, like perfect. Oh, thanks for taking her out yeah. for her birthday. <laughs> yeah, I just called, checked my message. No one left one. <laughs> Christine Taylor. Yeah, they just yeah. got back together too, didn't they? I didn't know they ever got divorced or anything. I just knew good that. For them. Yeah, good for them. Love is love. But uh, Brady Bunch. That's a good, 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 good pull. Good pull. Uh, is it though? I mean, it's I mean, that's the most it? basic. Yeah, come on, Alice. I, but what else am I gonna <laughs> pick? No, I know. I know. I know. One other one that my, I would watch with my dad when I was growing up, when I was like seven years old. But I don't remember specifics of that show either. I mean, Brady Bart's a good pick, but a good poll. I don't yeah. know about that. No, that's an easy poll. I, I just shut the mental for me yet. I grew up on the Brady Bunch, like it's yeah, definitely right in my wheelhouse. But yeah, there's some, I, I wasn't gonna take it. I there's still one or two monsters from the seventies. I'm shocked. I'm still t- I got this. I'm Don't worry about it. See what happens. I will it. say the Brady Bunch. You know, if if you're a horny person and you and you <laughs> jerk off to stuff that's on the internet, like the amount of incest porn out there and just weird stuff like step, you know, all that stuff is like. It makes sense why the Brady Bunch is so popular. Subliminally, I bet there's so many people out there. Carl, that are just you're like telling on up. yourself, Carl. You're telling on yourself, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> I know what you mean. But that that was a theme from the uh, the movies. Yeah, there's like, like that uh, was like the joke where Greg wanted to, was desperate to bang Marsha. I'm into took, weirder stuff, by the way. Rear ads. I mean, that's not even <laughs> like the tip it. of the iceberg. In real life, though, though Chief, uh, the Greg Brady, he took Mrs. Brady out on a date because I I read his biography years ago. Like he he asked her out on a date, like for real. And I don't know if they like dated to, like for a long time or anything, but they went out on at least one date, Mr. Mrs. Brady and Greg. And That's fucking life. weird. That is That's it. fucking yeah. weird. Like I know it's not his mom, but that's your mom, dude. Like you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's do that. acting. I mean, as, as a guy acting on a TV show, I mean, I can, you know, it's acting. It's, she it's, was on the surreal life. But that acting. makes me think you got There's other shit going on in your head that you want to date your mom. That's what it makes me think. Like you got some mommy things going on. Yeah, well, you, you know, you, yeah. you can just leave the acting separate. That's mm-hmm. all. <laughs> All right, uh, Brady Bunch off the board. Uh, it's to me, Rear. You just talked about it. I got to do it right now because um, Carl already has his 80s. But I'm going Barry for the 2010s. Uh, oh, oh, wow! I thought you were going from the 90s. You, you, you sunk me there. No, great, great, great show. Barry's awesome, and I, I, I left Noah Hank on the board for the HBO character draft, and I did it regrettably so. And a lot of people are disappointed in me. So I had to take Barry here. Barry's awesome. I mean, it's like three seasons in, eight episodes, easy catch up. You guys should do it. I, I've been meaning to do it. I actually started it like the first episode, like maybe a week ago, but fell asleep. Did you? So right. that's my biggest issue with every single TV show. Mm-hmm. Narcolepsy it just <laughs> fucking gets you. Well, I, my whole thing is, is I'm not watching it in my like spare time. I'm watching it as I go to bed. So unless it hooks me from second the show starts, then I'm like, I fall asleep. Mm-hmm. You're out. I'm out. Hmm. Um, hmm. But yeah, not much to say if you guys haven't seen it. Um, but uh, what are we got going over there, Rare? Uh, it's just uh, Paulie Wong. That's my brother just popped by in the background. He's on vacation. He says, what's up to the Chicago Oh, place. there he goes. Tell Uncle Mitch I said, what's up, too? Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll do when we see him. He's and, not here, though. Oh, damn. Yeah, bring him yeah. up. Yeah, uh, not this yeah. Year. Rare, you talked about it. Barry's great. That's really all there is to it. If we yeah, were the only two. I had it. on my board, and honestly, like I, I was hemming and hawing between that and Veep, but Barry just finished the third season. It's still in process, whereas Veep is kind of a completed product. But Barry was very close to getting taken by myself. If you haven't seen it, guys, you got to watch it. It's it's like, a, I don't want to compare it to Breaking Bad, but it can go from like hilariously dark, like morbid shit to like cracking your cracking your ass off two seconds later like laughing your balls off it really goes shifts in tones like crazy and it can hit you in the feels a bit barry one of the top shows on tv right now definitely recommend it highly yeah there was a scene in the second season where i was like oh shit is this about to go the breaking bad route it was about to get very serious so uh yeah that's a great endorsement uh carl um i need what 2010s and 1970s correct all right, I have to wait for a rear head to get back so I can make my 1970s pick. <laughs> or you can make your uh, tens first. I don't have one yet. Okay. I don't have one either, and I'm freaking <laughs> I out. I am not doing well right I now. I am guys. freaking out about that. Yeah. I'm glad you said it because yeah. I don't have one. One of my tougher drafts. I just feel I don't 
my rhythm's off. I have been looking through 2010 sitcoms that started 2010 or later, and I got nothing. I got like dark stuff. I don't know about that. Like it's like, and the other thing is, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I used to laugh a lot more when I was younger. Like the the older oh. I get, the less funny I find anything. Yeah, you hate everything. Not that's no. not good at all. <laughs> that's probably why you like the 70s so much. Um, I'm gonna go to the 70s. Uh, this is the show I know best from the 70s. I'm taking Hogan's Heroes. Dead so, silence. Uh, was Hogan 60s? Well, I think 60s and 70s was don't it? matter. You said Yeah, yeah it doesn't right. matter as long as it predates. Yeah. yeah. Hogan's Heroes. Wow. Oh, yeah, 65 to 71. Shit. That's okay. right. No, so, no, you're good. Here's a story about Hogan's Heroes. When I was a, when I was a kid, uh, my old man had like a fucking mail-in video subscription and it was like the only thing that would get like um it was like the only thing that he like recreationally would like spend <laughs> i can remember him like spending money on just for himself would be like the special edition hogan's heroes collections and they would mail two vhs's every month and they would have like a collection of like eight episodes on the two oh, vhs's nice. and then he he would be like a little kid coming home from work and be so excited that we go sit down in the basement and watch hogan's heroes and so, you know, I'd be like seven years old, like, what's going on here? And he would not hesitate at all to be like, well, you got to understand, this is a time when the Germans are doing this, the United States. And so what, <laughs> what the real satire here is, and he was just very into like explaining uh, like the dynamic and why this is so funny. And the concept is it's a POW camp in Germany and the Germans are just complete morons. I mean, you could, they, they like throw parties there, they smuggle booze, they leave the camp. And the reason is they're like, well, there's a war going out there. We'd much rather be prisoners here. We can mm -hmm. escape, but we'll just hang out here so we don't have to fight the war. We'll just party and booze and all this stuff. And so it was like kind of like a an anti-war sitcom about, in some kind of sense, it was like very anti-war. And the guy who played Hogan, uh, or not Hogan's here, um, what's the fucking, uh, yeah, Colonel Bob Hogan had a real sad, I don't even want to bring it up. Now I'm going to sound like Clummer. Oh, yeah, I can't, here, can't so have a Clummer. On that. We should have Clummer on this one as a stack guy. Bob Crane you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 Bob Crane. Yeah, they, well, they, do you ever see the movie with Greg Kinnear, Auto Focus? It's, it's about like the, the life of Bob Crane, the guy from Hogan's Heroes, man. Check it out, Greg Kinnear, he plays, a, cause he was into, all, well, like we were just talking about your kinks, Kyle. He was into all kinds of kinky <laughs> shit. Had a mysterious death, but yeah, check it out, Auto Focus, uh, Greg Kinnear, I think Willem Dafoe's in it. Crazy movie, dude, It's uh, it adds a little extra element to Hogan's Heroes. Bludgeon. Uh, were you a Hogan's yeah. Heroes guy, Rear? Not a huge one. It was one of those, you know, when dad, dad watched that. Um, well, some other shows I'm, I'm not going to mention until the draft's over yet. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it was one of those, like, kind of wicked 60s-era sitcom. Like, probably hasn't aged well. I mean, obviously, it's in a, a German uh, prison of prisoner of war camp. Probably not going to see that made today as well. But, yeah, it was kind of clunky. It hasn't aged all that great. But, you know, uh, didn't have it on my board, though. No disrespect. It's okay. All right, you're up again, 2010s. Um, man, this whole time I forgot I had to find a 2010 show. I got one, and I'm hoping you don't draft it. Um, <laughs> okay, this is bad, but it's the last show that I've actually laughed at. Chief, just be fucking proud of me here. Will you? Will you give me like a? Will you give me like a? a I, I don't know. I'm don't meeting know. you on your ground here. I'm not even. I'm in my head. It's like I don't even know if there are good 2010 comedies for the board here. I'm just going oh. with what I know. The yeah, last go, show that go like with really made me laugh hard. Love that for you. I am proud of you. Uh, thanks, bud. I'm taking Bill Burr's uh, F is for Family in the 2010s. Mm. The the animation comedy where it's just Bill Burr being a dad in the 70s, just getting extremely pissed off about everything. Um, it's probably not even that good of a pick. If you've seen it, I don't know. I laughed at it, but I know you probably fucking hate it. Like, rip on me. Let's go. No, I'm I, again not not on my board. I, I'm a big Bill Burr guy. Just you know, I, I think I thought the 2010s are actually the deepest decade on here as far as like good shows to pull. Really? Uh, I have nothing. Nothing. I thought 80s by far, but yeah, well, 80s had like the powerhouse, but there was like four or five, boom, boom, boom. The the 10s, the top quality might be a little lower, but like the consistency of like funny shows in the 2010s. I'll rat them off when, when we finish up here, but I there's got a lot two of good on my board. board. Wow. I had uh, speaking of Bill Burr. Um, at the All Star Game in LA, I was coming out of the merch store, and he came out of the merch store right behind me. And Jake's like, "Holy fuck, dude! It's fucking Bill Burr!" And I spun around, and I was like so excited. And he grabbed me. He's like, "Don't you dare go up to him and say hi right now!" And I was like, "No, I'm not gonna say shit to him. It's just like 
that guy is like literally in in an icon in comedy and i can't help myself but just yeah, stare at him right i stood there with my beer he's probably like 20 feet away i probably just stared at him for like three minutes as he wandered around and he said hi to people he's super nice short guy hanging out like I he's like say shorter like than me i think i i thought yeah i was expecting like he a is? bigger guy I think he's like because five, five, his personality yeah. on stage oh is just i like would have guessed fucking that he was relentless six feet. right you'd think he exactly yeah. I, I was expecting this like big broad yeah uh, so it was just funny. To, it was like, maybe not funny, but it was uh, maybe not surreal, but it was fucking cool to just stand there and see. Bill Burr. <laughs> I, I do think that, and maybe this is wrong, but I do think that you could go gone up to him and be like, hey, big fan. Like, I'm a barstool guy because he's done enough stuff with us. Well, like, he funny. knows it. Like, I think you can. I think but you can I do know that if him. he if he was like, what the fuck do you want? I'd be like, never mind, dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to risk that. It's funny you say that because obviously, like, we've had the privilege of meeting a lot of cool people through this job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I had we he was on the Portnoy show a couple of weeks ago and I was I was DMing him and he's like yo just text me and I was texting him I, I and I looked at my buzz like yo it's kind of sick I'm texting that Bill Burr. Right. That, that like I had sick. like a little kid moment where I was like I, I still cool. get that here and there when like <laughs> no, yeah, I'll get an important person's phone number <laughs> yeah 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 like every time yeah and but like I, it's kind of worn off a lot on me yeah but like he oh, was it definitely one, has he was saying one that, that got though, me yeah yeah, I was yeah. Like, wow that's yeah. pretty sweet but it. I I think so. like athletes doesn't but like Bill would, Bill Burr would make yeah, me go yeah, oh yeah. wow but yeah, yeah. all right because then you're like enough sucking Bill Burr's dick. yeah well I mean yeah but at the same time it's Bill Burr so no I know uh, Bill Burr I would I would like to do it a lot more but I'm I don't want to I don't want Bill to see this clip and be like these guys oh are these losers. guys are fucking <laughs> yeah you know you know what uh, Billy Redface fuck you <laughs> yeah fuck you Bill um okay Bill Burr's a good name too Bill F is for Bill family Burr. off the board it's back to me. The eighties, I, I I don't know. Everything was taken. And I still just can't decide. I'm between three, but um, I guess I'll. What are you laughing at? I'm struggling here. I'll buy. Can I get Bill's number from you? I'll buy. Absolutely time, not. Eighties is a tough decade. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, eighties is a tough decade. There, it's I, so you said deep, all the, though. Yeah, like the powerhouses went, but. I, there's Man, one there's, here from the 80s, Ed, that I am shocked that you're not sprinting to the podium to draft. Because I know which one you're talking about, and I really like it, and I'm in, I'm really debating it, but there's one I watched more. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. It's so fun. You you have this debate every week that at this point you would think. That I would figure it you know, out. You know, it's like Jerry Jones every, I, I don't know, maybe that's not the analogy, but like you just don't. You know, I kind of go based on like winnability, I guess, and I don't think I'm going to win this week, so I'm going to take the one that I watched and I liked the most. Okay. And uh, it was always on the Disney Channel, and it's Growing Pains. Uh, Great one. Mike Seaver, Leonardo DiCaprio's first uh, debut. Um, his friend named Boner. His friend is named Boner. Yep. <laughs> Unbelievable theme song. Great theme song. Show me that smile again. <laughs> Show me that smile again. Um, I know my friend Rico is going to be mad I didn't go in a different direction. Uh, but so I still there's one more than I I know there's yeah. two there's two heavy hitters yeah. still left on the board uh, but I I stayed true to myself so chief you should be proud even though I insulted you earlier I am uh, but I love growing pains I'm used to the insults on this show yeah though, I know so. are uh, they insults or are they just pointing out no nah, because I, I get I get vindicated by history. do you think I <laughs> oh, do you think I biff that no no I, I mean that's that's like a really good show there's one show and maybe it's not the one you're thinking of we'll do an honorable mention that i thought like just fits in your wheelhouse, wheelhouse yeah. yeah well this is again a challenge when we go uh into the 70s category because i just i'm not or in the 80s i mean like before our time like, mm -hmm. i'm not familiar enough to and it really what threw the 80s off was uh seinfeld and simpsons being 89 yep. yeah that changes the whole draft that if fucks not. it up yeah totally. it really does what we should have done is when it was like prevalent, but mm -hmm. that also only one episode of the '80s, so that that's that's tough because it's more of a '90s show. But we'll exactly, right. but then it gets subjective. It, it gets too hard. I don't know, man. I think, we're gonna, get, I think we're gonna get absolutely shit on for for saying Seinfeld's an '80s show. You're right. We I think we're gonna get absolutely shit on for saying that Simpsons is an '80s show. Probably. Simpsons Sim still going Simpsons on right more now. You know what though? though? Just listen. Fuck them. Really? Listen. Fuck them. Uh, White Sox, Dave. All right, so I got the list pulled up of all the sitcoms of 2010 onward, and I haven't seen uh, hardly any of them once. <laughs> that said, I started watching Shit's Creek like two weeks ago. I got through like four episodes, and it was fucking hilarious. 
that's what I got to go with because I have people are going to love it. I haven't I haven't seen like all the other heavy hitters, and there's many of them that I just have never seen a second of. I've heard good things. It's it, I thought it was like a chick flick show. It's not. It's like a hilarious show. It's like dirty humor, like men, like man humor. Aren't so, those the same people from Best in Show? Wait, haven't man. seen that. That's a great one. Those Eugene, like Eugene Levy's actors. in it. From it, is it the mom too? Yeah, it's Eugene Levy. Uh, that's right. Uh, Catherine O'Hara from yeah. uh, Home Alone. Uh, it was, it's really good though. It's really funny. So I'm excited to carry on with it. And he's just Jim's dad to me, and he's just a guy who's funny no matter what he says. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you know what would so. be a good draft, too, are like characters like Jim's dad, where it's like you just see that guy, and you're like, you, you don't know, know his name, you know the character. Dude, I don't know what it? other thing Did, they do. Oh, okay. I want to like steal this bit. synonymous with. Yes. Yeah. I want to steal this bit from Shane Reardon so badly, but like every week or two, they'll, he'll have uh, like a segment on the score called That Guy. So it'll just be all the movie, movie the actors that play that guy in like every movie, That's and pretty nobody, much what he said. nobody knows his name. Joe mm-hmm. Guglielani or whoever Mega Make a Money drafted that one time is like a that, he's first that guy. Pick on that he's that guy. Yeah, Joe Trulia. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. There's the dude from like Black yeah. Hawk Down and uh, 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 Prison Break. That guy, I don't know his name. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you were shaking your head. Um. Um, all right, I'm sure there's a ton of them, but Shit's Creek, a lot of people love it. Yeah, it's in my it's in my queue. I haven't watched it. My old lady watched it a couple of times, raved about it. It's just one of those shows I'll get to someday. I haven't yet, so I can't right. I can't yay or nay or poo poo this. I wish day. I could give you guys more on it, but I'm only a few episodes in, like I said. But the first handful of episodes that I watched were all hysterical. So that's what I got on it. I Are wish you? I could have given more. I'm sorry. Chief 2010s. So I'm between two that are both Amazon Prime shows. And oh, I thought you were going something else. I, I feel like I'm kind of light on the 2010s looking through uh, looking through it. So I will go with – I'm going to go with Miss Maisel, and I think it's because the dad in Miss Maisel I think is the best TV dad maybe of all time. Like Come he, on. You haven't seen it? You haven't seen it. You can't say. That he is, is bold, I, I know it's bold. He is. He steals the show every single time he's on camera. He's absolutely h- hilarious. Like what Carl's saying, like, who, how, what have you laughed at, like genuinely laughed at, like recently? I've laughed at him. Like he, he is. But you're like, talking about Al Bundy and Homer Simpson and I, I, Uncle I under- Phil. I understand. But like those guys... Like I, I don't, I'm not familiar with Al Bundy, but like Uncle Phil wasn't funny, and okay. you know, like Homer was like, you know, like he had no like, re- like I, I don't want to, whatever. Like he doesn't have like a ton of redeeming. You're like laughing at him a lot, you know. This guy is just like he. I I feel like I might just have to blog like this. Randy Marsh, his best moments. Like he's so fucking funny, uh, and Homer. Like I know like. It's not like a real actor. It's like a it's a cartoon. Same thing with your your Randy Marsh pick. So I I think that TV dad is is so funny and the show's good. Um, you know Rachel Brosnahan, good good actor. I think it's won a bunch of awards. It's a very good show that I feel like gets slept on a little bit. So the first two seasons were great. I think now they're on to season four. Um, it might have slowed down a little bit. I think it's a good pick, Chief. I watched the first couple. I haven't finished the last few, but uh, what's her name? Uh, Rachel Brosnan. She's terrific uh, as uh, as the, the character, uh, Mrs. Maisel. Yep. It's a good show. I, I, it's like basically like, what would you say, uh, reality-based fiction, more or less. You know, there weren't a lot of women comedians back on that right. era, certainly in New York, and they kind of like put, put stuff in that world. But, yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a solid pick. Thank you. All right. Marvelous uh, Miss Maisel. Mr. Uh, Rear Admiral, the uh, Mr. Irrelevant. What do we got? So – you know what? I'm torn. I I cannot believe this show is still on the board. I'm, I wasn't going to take it. I could have sworn, unless I you took it and I somehow missed it, I have to take this just on pure value. It's a show I loved when it came on, and then it kind of I aged out of it or whatever. Now I watch it. I kind of roll my eyes, but it's such a monster. I can't not take fucking friends in the fucking this hole. Nobody took fucking friends. Well, was that's that what, what we, talking that's about? That's what we're referencing, and you're like, I'm not taking it. Oh, and I wasn't trying to psych this out. I really wasn't. I figured one of you guys would take it in the last three rounds, and now I'm looking, and it's like, well, how do I not take the most popular well, fucking show of the 90s on the board, well, even if like I'm not the craziest about it anymore? And I wasn't like to psych you out, so I don't know. I figured you should take it. I'm shocked that Friends is on the board for the last pick. I'd be an asshole not to take it. 
So I'm taking friends, right. man. And I, I think you're being an asshole in taking it. Yeah, I think, I think oh, you yeah. taking it is being an asshole. Especially pal. when you shat on it like 20 minutes ago. Well, no, well, no, you know, take it. Man, man. fuck friends. Yeah. Like, I, I have I never watch. seen a single episode and I never fucking will because out. so fuck many you. fucking people have told me, you got to watch friends. You got to watch friends. I don't got to watch friends. I'm never going to watch friends. Fuck friends. Fuck Pam. What's it? Wait, uh, Phoebe. <laughs> fuck Phoebe. Yeah, all of them. Fuck David Schwimmer. You spent too all. much time with Whitney. That's what you're doing. I mean, that was just an unbelievable Bush League move there to get to, to just say you're not going to touch friends. We all said we're not touching it. Well, I never said it. I didn't say the name. And and honestly, I, I was sitting here like, there's no way that they're not, they're not going to take fucking friends. But they're not they're fucking taking rear, it. what I was saying, here's what happened. You're not writing stuff down. What I was saying was at that point when Chief took – Fresh Prince, everybody had their 90s pick. So I was saying it's you or nobody was it was going to be friends. And that's why, yeah. you know, you're like, I'm not taking it. But then you probably kept, as more time went by, you're like, well, fuck, I'll take it. So, I, I, yeah, I'm gen I mean, again, it's not even like that I have a particular like affinity for the show still, but what I had it against. And now, well, now that the draft's over, I mean, here's the other 90s picks I had. Everybody loves Raymond, mm -hmm. Be Beavis and Butthead, and Live in Color, Freaks and, Ge Freaks and Geeks, and the Larry Sanders show. Those are like, I'm like, Friends is just too big of a powerhouse to leave on the board. I'm, I genuinely thought one of you guys was just going to take it because it was such an obvious pick, it, and I was I wasn't gonna, but it was there. Freaks and Geeks is a much better show. Ra dude. has officially cornered the millennial woman vote in this draft. Yeah, yeah, so. and I'm not, and I'm not even. That's the thing. I hate. I'm not even trying to panda, but it's just, it's just the value is just. You yeah. could not. I could not take it. I could not take <sighs> it. As far as 2010s, I've been raving about. Here's a show, actually, the 2000s I had to leave on the board. 30 Rock. I was either that or Arrested Development. 30 Rock was 30 Rock. That's great. with Tina Fey, right? Oh, yeah. Love her. Yeah, Alec Baldwin is great. Yeah. Tracy Morgan. Oh, yeah. let me, uh, I'll read it down again, then we'll go over everything. Uh, Carl, Married with Children, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, That 70s Show, Hogan's Heroes, F is for Family, Eddie, The Office, Different Strokes, Boy Meets World, Barry, Growing Pains, White Sox, Dave, Seinfeld, South Park, Entourage, The Brady Bunch, Shit's Creek, Chief, The Simpsons, Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Happy Days, The Marvelous Miss Maisel, uh, Rear Admiral, All in the Family, Cheers, Arrested Development, Veep, Friends. Uh, you're right, I think you got a great chance, and I don't think anyone saw that coming after you fucking hit us all over the head with all in the family at six overall he did he did oh, the five overall he did the Sorry. opposite of me yeah where like i always i feel like i start strong and then i yeah he finished strong. the wheels come off he he was he finished very strong yeah two two hammers out of the gate uh arrested i think that might be somewhat of a niche pick but beat stands on its own and then the, to get friends is the hammer again mr irrelevant absolutely stunning to have that on the board still uh but going back to 2010 a few other shows atlanta brock Maya. Hacks, Ted Lasso, Glow, you're the worst. Those are some other great shows from the 2010s if you haven't seen. No, yeah, Ted Lasso's 2020. I was going to take Ted Lasso, but it is not. It would, uh, there's yeah, no way right. we could take Ted Lasso. Oh, I'll make no, that clear. Well, Anybody's watching this? Current. Well, yeah, it could have been, but I didn't say that. I, I I had the same thought though. You had 2010s. Clear, yeah. Uh -huh. 2020 and about. Yeah. I would have. I mean, you're only. Two I mean, in years the future, in. we could probably do that. Yeah. But I agree um, with you. I thought the same way. Ted Lasso is like a first round pick. I, I've yeah, only it, seen the first it, two actually, episodes. Yeah, 2020, so he wouldn't even have been there. But Glow's a great show on Netflix. Unfortunately, they canceled it after like two or three seasons about the gorgeous ladies are wrestling. That's, the, a, that's a good show. But. The uh, the other one I, for the 2010s I was between, I don't know how many people have seen it. It's really fucking funny. It's raunchy, but Fleabag. Oh, great show. Fleabag is no, fucking yeah. great. I thought you were a new girl guy. No, I, oh, I went through a, a new girl phase because of an ex-girlfriend. Oh. It was just on all the time all the time so like i'm not like a like a fan of it it's and people can, tell me i look like the guy all the time can uh, i tell you my two other 80s ones yep that i was between so obviously full house yep and the wonder years that's the one i thought yeah. you were gonna do that's the what the wonder years is awesome that's like it's genuinely Kyle, great i thought for sure you were gonna take mash i cannot believe mash didn't get picked out it's like the ultimate dad show like i've seen every episode 10 <laughs> times because of my dad but all the family is a bigger show for me but i'm shocked that none of these took MASH, to be honest with you. Honestly, I I was like, <laughs> I, I can't really talk about MASH. And you can, you can talk. We'll, we'll I mean, try. just maybe like a little bit, but I was really, my main motivation is I'm going to call my dad tonight and be like, yo, dude, I took all these heroes <laughs> today. He's going to be like, I, I, he's still, we were on the phone the other day and he's like, you got to show me how to get these podcast things on the phone. So he doesn't, I mean, he has like, he knows what we're doing and, and yeah, he follows yeah, yeah. some of the clips and stuff, but uh I know he's gonna be fired up. He's gonna be like, "Hogan, if you don't win this one, you know those fucking jabronis, he'll be, he'll be all fired up." So, uh, if you know Hogan's Heroes too, that's just a great show. Thank you. 
I have no honorable mentions, and I say this I got, knowing I, I will got, be left off the poll this week, and that's totally fine. I got one that's glaring that I absolutely love to show and watch it. It's it's one of my favorite shows when I'm flipping through the channels, like at 5 p.m. on a Tuesday, middle of the week. I'll watch like 10 in a row, Family Guy. Family mm-hmm. Guy's great fucking television. I fell yeah. off of that. I, it's I, I great went through like television. a phase. Um, uh, King of the Hill, same thing. King yeah, of the that, Hill. That's a good nod. Parks and Rec in terms of like the people who came out of that and were a part of that or it's like uh it's the 27 Yankees of, uh, right. of a cast. So that's the show I was thinking of drafting last, but I've never seen a second of it, and I've <laughs> seen a handful of episodes. I just have never seen any good TV shows lately, I guess. Yeah. Like um, comedies, at least. Saved by the Bell, shout out Rico. Um, yeah. Did you say that already? Yeah, I, I wonder years. He likes yeah. them both a lot. Um, and then Cosby Show, problematic, yeah. but mm-hmm. great show. I don't think you want to take that one in. Family anymore. Matters, yep. another great mm-hmm. show. Carl, on the, Winslow, board. the Winslow Family. I got five left. Uh, 70s, the Jeffersons. Yep. Good times. I wanted yeah. to ask you about this one for Hold the on, 70s. Hold on, let me finish, Dave. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you're done. 70s, uh, the Jeffersons, and then I, I I love fucking Lucy, man. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that was there. classic. Yeah. Um, one from the 80s, Roseanne. Mm-hmm. Dan that Connor. Uh, 90s, Home Improvement, and Frasier. I never I seen like Frasier, though. So it was always on after Seinfeld, and I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, Dave, go. My dad love Sanford and Sons. So, I, like, growing up, I'd watch it with him. I don't remember it at all, but he loved it. How? Yeah, talk to me about show. it. Yeah, Red Fox, I mean, one of the dirtiest, funniest comedians ever. He plays uh, Sanford, and his son, I think Lamont, they had a junkyard, man. He just would always pretend he was having a heart attack. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming, I'm coming, listen. He would always fake these heart attacks. Red Fox, great show, great show. Him, him owning a junkyard. Um, yeah, hey, I'm probably not a classic. I mean, if I'm thinking like classic black sitcoms from the 70s, I mean, Good Times is, was unreal. It's like, you know, uh, basically poor people in the projects, like trying to, you know, just fucking make a living. It was a real kind of gritty show. Same Norman Lear, same guy who made All in the Family. The Jeffersons, another one. Um, two really good shows from that back in that era. But the 80s, we got to give a shout out to Golden Girls. So obviously Cheers was an easy pick for me, but Golden Girls is one of those shows like, but four old broads, like four old horny broads in Florida. I used to watch it when I was like 13 years old, like probably bonk, th- you know, 13 year old me in the 80s watching it as a fucking teenage boy. But the show has not changed at all. It's still hilarious. Like it hasn't aged one bit. If you haven't watched the Golden Girls, man, that's one of those shows you can put on like Lifetime, whatever it's on and binge like 10, 12 of them. It's yeah. fucking still as funny as it's ever been. Uh, who else? Um, I was yeah, surprised, I Dave. Sorry. I was surprised you didn't take Eastbound and Down. I was thinking of it, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. All right, Moonlight. Rear. Anything no, else? Like, Moonlight is another one from the '80s. I had on that, but yeah, when you have when I had an opportunity for Chiaz, I couldn't couldn't pass up Chiaz. So. Yeah. All right. So, so when do I get crowned the winner? <laughs> we'll see. It's not going to air it for a couple weeks, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see how how it uh, goes down. On you'll Twitter. be back from vacation by the time it airs. So. <laughs> Good boys. Yeah. I won't spoil it. Yeah. Rear, thank you. Welcome back. It's great to have you. Actually, we should have addressed too. The last time you were on was when. White Sox Dave said he'd uh, smack the bat out of the guy's hand from coronavirus. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, has it been that long? No, yeah. man, I didn't. What did he do? I didn't Remember, say he that. said well, it was uh, things you wish you attended, and he said he'd tell the guy put the bat down from his coronavirus oh, soup. That was, that's that's why we love White Sox Dave for moments like that. That was an all time classic. <laughs> you wouldn't want to stop as, as all the guy. bullshit that. Went no, on but for we years. <laughs> the whole thing was like. I know. I get it. I know. I know. <laughs> That's one of my favorite clips. If Danny could like put that in the end of the video, if we could sign off with that super cut, that I would don't, be great. I don't consent. It's like, no, nah, Dave, it's just a fly in the wall, man. <laughs> I want to go back to and find the fucking asshole who ate the fucking bat that started this bullshit pandemic. Uh, Rear, thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you, boys. We love you, buddy. All right, man. Love uh, you, Enjoy the rest of the August. We'll see you guys soon, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah good vacation. For sure. um, Enjoy right, Vermont. That's it uh, for today. Thank you for listening. We'll see you all tomorrow.